Hey, it's Brock here from Rock Hill Farms. And today I'm out here to look at a driveway that I need to get fixed. A couple of my recent videos were repairs on my own driveway, and I've got videos on customers' driveways, but I've never done one quite like this. It presents some different challenges, and I've been trying to decide the best way to do it, so I thought I'd just jump on camera, show you guys what it looks like, and see if you have any suggestions of how you would do this job. So, what we have is a carport up by the house, and we have a concrete slab coming out under the carport, and that concrete's in good condition. After we get past the concrete, it transitions to asphalt, and that asphalt is in really bad shape. And then the main problem with this, because you could still drive on this part fine, but when you get down to the end of the drive where it meets the road, it slopes up really steep, and there's a culvert that's completely buried and not helping at all, and all the asphalt's broken so bad that they have trouble getting their car in and out of here because it'll bottom out, and if there's any bad weather or ice on it, they literally can't get out, and I have to come over and help them. If I didn't already mention it, I own this property and I rent it to my daughter and her family. But let's go down and take a look at the bigger problem area. Then I've also got a retaining wall over here that I need to get fixed. So I've got two projects on this driveway. Okay, so if you can see right over here, there is a drop off of at least eight to 10 inches where all this asphalt's broken out. And I'm pretty confident, I know for a fact, I'm gonna have to bust out all of this asphalt so that I can access the culvert pipe and fix that. But my one question I have is, do I need to take and bust out all of the asphalt back to the carport so I have more of a uniform surface? Or can I just do the end? The more I think about it, the more I think I'm gonna have to do the whole driveway. I've put rock in here before, but with this slope, that rock washes out the first time it rains. So I think I'm gonna have to use a product like a chip and seal that will not wash out. But I've personally never used chip and seal. I had a viewer named Bill who told me it's easy to use and you put it down and the heat from the sun kind of makes it stick. So I'm gonna look into that, see who around here sells it. And if you guys have any more experience with chip and seal, tell me how it's worked for you. Let's come over here and look at that culvert. So right here is a culvert that both ends of the culvert are completely buried. So there's no way any water moves through there. And this trench going back the other way has lost its shape. So it's really pushing water across here instead of up here. And then there's no shape to the other side where that culvert came out. Now, hypothetically, I could just ignore that culvert, but I think what I want to do is reshape this entire ditch next to the road on both sides of the driveway so that water does flow through here. Dig out both sides of this culvert, pull it out and either clean it out and reuse it or get a new culvert. And then rebuild the angle of this and then put a chip and seal over it. I'm not sure if I need to frame up around the ends to hold that chip and seal, but kind of what I'm picturing is digging all this out right here and then having that culvert pipe be open and then using some really large sandstone to make like a V right here to keep it from collapsing in again. And, and that should keep the water flowing through here. Then I'll reshape across here with dirt and then layer on that chip and seal if that's what I decide to go with. Let me know what you guys think about this project. Now let me go show you that retaining wall issue. Okay, if we look right here, you can see that that wall is bowing out. And it's, I don't know if you can tell, but it's actually leaning quite a bit out this way. And it's on its way to falling, and it looks like before we bought it, people drove these fence posts in because the wall has fallen over and the fence posts are still straight up and down. So those were put in there after the fact. And that wood, the house is over 50 years old, and if the wood's as old as the house, it's all rotten. You can see it's cracked and splitting. So I think I'm gonna dig all of this out on, on that side, pull all of this out, build a rock retaining wall, and then fill it back in and, and give them back their third parking space. Okay, so this is what it looks like from the downhill side. Pretty bad shape, definitely needs fixed, but I've never done anything like this. And that's kind of the exciting thing, it's the good thing and the bad thing about jobs like this. I've never done it, so it's a learning experience, and I'm building my skill set 
so that at some point I can be good enough to get paid to do jobs like this. I like to practice on my own properties as much as I can before actually trying to get paid for it. If you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments. You can also, if you've ever done jobs like this, you can put pictures on our Facebook page. And I appreciate you taking time to watch. I'll put links over here to more of our videos and I'll see you next time.